hello welcome to my youtube channel welcome to my fashion hub the best fashion channel in the world right so guys i want to put together this video on a vintage shirt both the cutting and the stitching i have a lot of videos on vintage shirt okay i want to see how i can give you guys the easiest formula ever all right so if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button and turn your notification bell on so that whenever i drop my videos you'll be the first to be notified all right so without wasting time Let's head into our video, cut and sew our vintage shirt, all right? Have any questions? Let me see in the comment section. Thanks, guys. Let's go. So for us to cut our vintage shirt, I'm going to show us a very simple, very simple method, all right? And also, the other video on vintage shirt, so many persons were complaining that the chalk is, is um, that they can't see what I'm drafting very well. So I'll try to make my chalk very, very visible so that you can see, all right? So if you're interested in knowing how to cut and sew a vintage shirt, you are watching the right video, all right? So I would advise you hit the subscribe button, turn your notification bell on, so that whenever I drop my videos, you'll be the first to be notified. So let's start. These are the measurements we are going to be using for our vintage shirt. We are going to be using a chest measurement, a shoulder measurement of... 19 a chest measurement of 42 the length of the shirt is 29 and um, i think that's basically what we need the neck of the shirt is 17 all right so let's hit into the cutting so when cutting your vintage shirt this is how you fold your fabric first of all you fold your fabric into two and very important, when you're using fabrics, try to make the fabrics have um, a part that is considered to be the head, all right? And you can know that by the diagrams, the images on the on the fabric. For this fabric, we have palm trees, okay? Palm trees heading this way, heading this way. So it means this is the head side of the fabric and this is the down part. So that you don't cut it and at the end you discover that your fabric, the pattern on it is showing, is, you know, is, is inverted. That won't be correct. So after note, taking note of that, I folded my fabric into two, you see, into two. And the bad side of the fabric is the one outside. The good face is inside, all right? So after folding into two, I went ahead and again, after folding two, I went ahead. The next thing you do is to fold it again this way, all right? Now, you fold this way using an allowance of anything up to five inches is okay, all right? Five inches is fine, but what we have here, I think we have up to five, six. You can fold up to six inches, all right? For so anything up to five is fine. So this is almost six inches. You can see this is almost six inches. Now you fold this like this because of the what? Because of the neck, all right? Because of the cam collar neck you are putting on this vintage shirt. That is why you fold this allowance up to what? Five inches plus or six inches. All right. If not, this allowance is known for a normal packet shirt. This allowance is just two and a half inches. So after folding like this, let's go. The next thing for us to do is to apply our measurement and start our cutting straight up. So the next thing for us to do now is to get the chest, the wideness of the chest, which they said is what is 42. If you divide 42 by 4, you will have what? You will have 10 and a half. All right? So 10 and a half. This is 10 and a half right here. This 10 and a half here. Okay? So what we have 10 and a half here, I'm not going to cut on this 10 and a half. I will add extra 1 inch. That becomes what? 11 and a half. So this is my 11 and a half. And I'm going to make sure this chalk is very, very visible so that you can see it very well. So from this beginning point here, this is my 11 and a half. But remember what, what we are dealing with is what 10 and a half. Just one inch seam allowance. So I'll still come down here at the middle part somewhere and still mark what 11 and a half. I'll still mark 11 and a half somewhere down here because I want to join the points and I would love to get a straight line. All right. Like I said, I want this to be very visible since the last video, 
we were complaining that it wasn't visible, the lines wasn't visible. So I'm going to mark this. So I hope this line is visible enough for you to see. I hope you can see this line. I hope this line is visible enough for you to see. So this is what? The size of our vintage shirt. Let's confirm that it is what? It is 11 and a half. So this is level and a half, all right? So we are correct. The next thing for us to do is to come down here by four inches, okay? From the beginning point here, we'll come down here by four inches. So this is four inches, all right? The next thing we'll do is to join this point to this point here. So we'll simply join this point to the beginning point here, all right? I believe this line is also visible and you can see it all right so the next thing we're going to do now is to check the length of our vintage shirt and we say the length we are looking for is 29 so we're going to keep our tape in the middle of these two lines here and then locate our water 29 okay so this is 29 all right 29 is here so it's 29 here We'll not add it, we'll just leave it at 29. The length of our sheet is 29, all right? So this is 29 right here. So we'll make this line a straight line. 29 is here. I'm going to make it very bold so that you can see it. This is 29, all right? So we have gotten our front block, okay? So we're going to remove this front block out. So that we'll use it to get the back block. So that we can use it to get the back block. And then we'll apply our measurements and cut it out. So the next thing for us to do is to pin it. We'll pin it properly. So that it doesn't, the shape doesn't scatter. Alright, so the next thing for us to do now is to quickly get to the back piece and finish off the work. So mind you, this is the head side, the upside of the fabric. So we simply keep this this way. And see the one keeping it. And this is the center part of the back. Please pay close attention so that you don't miss out at any point. All right, so the next thing we're going to do at this point, we're going to slant this shoulder here just like we did for the front piece, we slant this shoulder here. After slanting it, we'll push it down to come down, giving us allowance here of what? Four inches. So the next thing for us to do we slant it down we have allowance here of four inches i see this four inches so the next thing for us to do is to fold these four inches inwards like this i see this 
fold it inwards like this to cross this front part by just it will cross it overlap it overlap it by just half an inch it's just half an inch so we will press it so that will prevent it from shaking and um, scattering what we are doing the next thing for us to do is to apply our measurements and finish this this vintage shirt so how do we apply our measurement let's get the shoulder measurement first our measurements are starting from here mind you from here all right so if we keep our tape here our shoulder is 19 divided by 2 that will be nine and a half okay so this is what nine and a half right here hope you can see this this is nine and a half all right so this nine and a half we have here we see extend it down all right it's in a nine and a half down. This is it. Okay. The next thing for us to do is to get the the length of our arm. And how do you cover your arm? You simply divide the chest, the shoulder measurement by two. If you divide shoulder measurement, which is 19 by two, you have nine and a half. And this is what? Nine and a half here. But from experience, we're not going to use this nine and a half complete. We minus one and a half inch from it that will take us back to what to eight and i'm going to show you why you are minusing that one and a half inch so nine and a half minus one and a half takes you back to what to eight this is eight here all right so this eight and nine and a half here that we measured here will join the line together so that we can curve our arm all right join the points together that we can curve the arm so this is it. I want it to be very visible so I can see it. Hope it is visible enough for you to see it. All right. The next thing for us to do is to curve this arm. And curving this arm, we'll simply come up here by two inches from this point here. This eight and from this eight inches point, we'll come up by two inches. All right. And at this two inches mark. We'll come in by what? By one inch. By one inch. All right. Then we'll do what? We'll cover our arm. We'll cover our arm like this. All right. So I'm going to cover our arm like this. I believe this chalk is visible enough for you to see. I believe it's visible enough for you to see. All right. So this is our arm here. That I have just caught. I see this. I see this. It's our arm here. Now I, I said I'll show you why I removed this one and a half inch here. This is why the arm size we are looking for is nine and a half. So let's see if we have our nine and a half here. Mind you, this is our chest measurement. Ten and a half. This is it. Ten and a half is here. That one inch is seam allowance. So let's check if we we'll have our nine and a half from here. Can we see, guys? We have nine and a half accurately. Nine and a half. So if we had used this nine and a half complete, by the time you cover your arm, you'll be having something as much as eleven and a half. And that will be too big. That is why you minus or one inch, one and a half inch before doing that. Hope is taken. The next thing for us to do is to what is to check the arm to get the the neck and the formula for getting neck it is simply the neck size divide by what divide by four so for this neck we have a neck of we have a neck of 17 so if we divide 17 by 4 divide 17 by 4 17 divide by 4 you will have four and a quarter all right so the depth of this neck is going to be what four and a quarter this is four and a what and a quarter we got this by simply dividing the neck by four all right this is four and a quarter and for us to get our wideness we'll divide this four and a quarter by two if we divide four and a quarter by two you should be having two point one all right 2.1, this should be 
hope we are seeing this. The next thing for us to do is to curve our neck. Next thing we want to do is to curve our neck, all right? And we'll simply curve our neck this way. We'll curve from here to this point here. And I hope this chalk is clear, you can see it. So it, it's called, it's roundish, okay? It's a semicircle. It's a, it's a semicircle, right? So that when you. I see this. It's a circle. Yes. Right. So when we want to cut now, this neck here, we're not going to cut together with the back piece. Please be careful. We are cutting only the what? the front piece. So we are done with the neck measurement, the next thing for us to, the neck cutting, the next thing for us to do is to cut out the what? The arm. So I'm going to cut out my arm this way. All right. Now cut here. Now, guys, a quick one. If this was a packet shirt, all right, I would have gone ahead to to curve the okay. to deepen the front part of the shirt by having. I would have deepened inside by having, all right. But since it's a vintage shirt, a vintage shirt is not as fitted to the body as a packet shirt. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to deepen the front piece inside by half an inch. I'll simply leave it like this. All right, now I want to show us why I didn't add any allowance to the length of the shirt when I was putting the the, the the shirt. Remember, we measured the length of our shirt. We said it's 29, and we used 29. We didn't add any hemming allowance. It is because when this back piece that is is over by four inches comes in, all right. If you measure this length now from here, we are having up to 31. So this excess here becomes our word hemming allowance. That is why I didn't add any hemming allowance when I was taking measurement for the word front piece. Hope that is clear. That's why. All right. So the next thing for us to do is this front here. We will notch it. We will notch the front here. Just the front. We will notch it here. And even at the neck here, we will see what we will notch it. All right, and by so doing, we are done with cutting this vintage shirt. Let's cut the yoke. All right, we have to get the yoke. And for us to get the yoke, we simply let's cut the sleeve first before we get the yoke so that we don't waste our fabric. Cut the sleeve first, and even the, when cutting the sleeve, you have to be still mindful of the pattern of this dress. The threes are heading this way, so we're going to cut here to be the shoulder part of the sleeve, all right? So this is how we we'll cut it. And for the sleeve, for the sleeve, we have our sleeve length to be 9. The sleeve round to be 15. Okay. So sleeve length of 9. Mind you, our fabric is talking here. You know, our fabric is talking. So, how are we going to fold our fabric to cut our sleeve? We'll simply fold our fabric considering what? The, the arm. Okay. If you divide, we we'll say the, the shoulder. We we'll consider the shoulder. You say the shoulder is what is seven is 19. Divide 19 by 2, you will have 9.5, okay? You can just add 1 inch to it, or half inch to it. That becomes 10. So that's what, that's how I folded this fabric here. So this is 10, all right? So the next thing for us to do is to check the length of the sleeve, which is what? 9.5, all right? The length of this sleeve is 9.5. And, and since it's a vintage shirt, we are going to hem it inside, and we'll add 2.5 two inch, two inches 
for that terminal allowance, that becomes 12. All right. So this is 12. So this is a length nine and a half. Here. I will extend the line nine and a half plus two and a half inches to become 12. This is a two and a half inches. All right. So the next thing for us to do is to get the what? The the sleeve round. We said it's 15. By 15 divided by 2, that will be 7 and a half. This is 7 and a half. We just add like a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So from the top here, how to cover our sleeve? From the top here, we'll mark 5 inches downwards. Or 4 and a half inches. This is a meter shirt. 4 and a half inches is fine. 4 and a half inches here. Okay. And then we'll curve this to meet this point here. So this is how we'll curve it. Now I have in my videos a video on how to curve, how to curve or how to cut the sleeve accurately. Okay. Check in my videos and you will see that video. In that video, I explain how to get all these sleeve curves that are there. I don't want us to waste time with all those things here. So we're not going to that. The next is to join this point to this point here. This point here to this point. Here. All right. And then, instead of coming straight like this, we'll play it out here. All right. By one inch. So that when you hem it, you won't be having shortage here. I explain all of the, all of this in that video on how to cut sleeve accurately. Next thing for us to do now is to go ahead and cut it. And we are done. So we we'll simply use this to produce the second sleeve. Next thing for us to do is to get the the yoke, all right? So we we'll simply get our yoke from here. Material is almost shot in, but you can still give a whole want. So a yoke right here. Like I said, guys, always remember to remove these rough edges. So with this, we are done cutting our vintage shirt. All right. The next thing for us to do is to go into the stitching aspect. So if you enjoy watching this video, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. Turn your notification bell on so that whenever I drop my videos, so you'll be notified. All right. Let's go into the, the, the stitching aspect. I'm going to show us how we are going to sew this vintage shirt okay now these are the front pieces all right i people a lot of persons were asking questions they were saying i made a mistake while cutting the front piece because i didn't maybe i didn't give button allowance but all of that is going to be sorted out now all right so the first thing is for us to address the issue of the button allowance okay so now this was how i cut this vintage shirt if you remember if you still remember the cutting video i recorded this in by about six inches, five and a half, all right? So next thing for us to do now, how are we going to get our button allowance? This is simply how we are going to achieve that, okay? We'll simply, this is one of the front pieces, there are two front pieces. That is the, the right-hand side. This is the left-hand side of the front piece. 
all right this is it this is so simply for us to get our button allowance first we are going to apply gum here okay interfacing all right this is the kind of interfacing i'm using i'm using for this one i'm using um paper gum you can use um cut uh stay you can use um any of the soft gums at all that you have there's no problem with that this is paper gum you can use this tape all right cloth gum whatever you call it interfacing so i'm going to apply the I'm going to gum it here just apply water now gum it this is the back side all right so i'm going to fold it back the way it was all right the way it was initially i'm going to still fold it back like that okay it's a step-by-step -step thing okay very simple step by step so that's i've already back the way it was before all right i've already back now how am i going to get my button allowance i'm simply going to get my button allowance by pushing out this inner allowance to come out by having remember this is where the notch is all right so from this notch point here I will push this to come out by half inch. All right, this becomes my button allowance. Can you see this? It's like this. I push it to come out by what? Half an inch, and that becomes my button allowance. So I'm going to do that on both sides. All right. So watch this. I have excess here because I pushed it out. So I'm going to simply trim off this excess I have here. Simply trim it off. You see that? Simply trim it off. So I'm going to do the same thing with the word with this other side. The same thing I did here, I'll do for this other side. As simple as that. Alright, so you can see the same thing I did to this side. I've replicated to this side. Now, this was our initial center, the initial center. So to bring them together, this forms an overlapping that gives you what? A button allowance all right so for those that we're asking how about the button allowance is how you get your button allowance you simply fold your neck this way you fold this this way and your vintage shirt is almost there hope you can see it just let's continue so um if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on and also in case the, um you you want to join my whatsapp group there's a link in the description below hit that link and join my whatsapp group join my whatsapp group so that whenever I drop my video, you'll be the first to be notified. So if you look at this, after I push this, after I pushed, after I push this out by half an inch, we have a shortage here. So I'm simply going to remove this. But it will not affect the length of this shirt at all. Why? Because there was excess allowance we gave to the length of the shirt when we are cutting the shirt. So it will not affect the length of the shirt at all because of the excess allowance we gave for the length when we were cutting the shirt. All right, so this is it. So we are done with the two front pieces the next thing for us to do is to work on the sleeves okay so this is the sleeve you see the way i cut the sleeve um this is the actual length somewhere here if i turn this way you understand better this is the actual length you see the chalk mark is here so i'm going to fold it on this actual length inwards all right from that actual length inwards and i'll do the same thing for the second sleeve whatever i do to this first sleeve the same thing i'm going to do to the second sleeve that's it that's how it's done so it will be nine okay it will be nine all right so simply we'll put it here so that it becomes so i'll use my hemming gum hope you all know what hemming gum is this hemming gum I'll apply hemming gum to this remove excess this side all right so the second step i'll do the same thing and the yoke all right this is the yoke okay this is the yoke all right so even for the yoke, you see I've already hemmed it inside by about three quarter inch. I've hemmed it inside, all right? So the next thing for us to do now is to go to the machine and start the joining. The joining formula we're going to use is this. This is the good side. This is the bad side, all right? So we'll now bring the front pieces. This is the good side. This is the bad side. The bad side with the bad side, like this, all right? Like this. Okay, now we'll bring our yoke together. This is our yoke. Our yoke now will be the what? The good side with the good side of the what? The fabric. But in order not to confuse you, let us join the, the shoulder, the back and front together first. 
two, you see? I'm going to join it like this. So I'll carry the second piece of the front. All right. So this is the third piece of the front. You can see. This is the third piece of the front. I see this. The first piece of the front. So we'll join the second piece of the front to this side. I see this. So the second piece of the front. You see, open it like this. Hope you can see very well. You see, bring this like this and match it here. All right. You see this. We'll join it here. And when joining, please don't allow it to stretch, right? So now, watch how we are going to join the yoke. We are finished joining the the two front pieces to the back piece. Now the next thing for us to do is to bring our yoke and join it, all right? So as you can see, this is it. The front pieces have been joined to the back piece. Can you see this? So we'll bring our yoke and join it so that this allowance will become this same this same allowance will be inside. So this is our, our back piece. This is the bad side, this is the good side, facing the good side of the fabric, like this and like this. So we'll keep it here, we'll stitch it, we'll also stitch here this side, alright? As simple as that. But let me turn like this so that you'll be seeing the first stitch. So that we'll make sure that the first stitch here is inside as we stitch, alright? It's a bit dark, but what I'm doing is simply what I've explained. So I hope you understand. So we are finished stitching this side. So we'll do the same thing, stitch the second side. Let me show you what I've stitched. This is what we have stitched. Can you see? So we'll take it here. We'll also bring it to this second side here. And we'll stitch it. Alright? This is it now. The second side here. Mind you, the whole thing is like this, right? So I've stitched this first side, we'll stitch the second side as well. Like this. Alright? So as you do, I'll turn this way so that we can see the stitch. Alright, so having done that, this is how it's looking now. Alright, so we'll simply move this yoke to the back because yoke is supposed to be at the back, right? So we'll now push the yoke to go to the back. This is the yoke. We'll now push it to go to the wall to the back. Can you see this? And turn it to go to the back. Can you see? Alright, so I'll take it to the back and simply watch. Now around my stitch. You see, this is the front. So this is clear now. This is the front. This is the back. So I'll stitch my yoke here, right? Hope the camera is close enough for you to see. Carefully, I will stitch my yoke here. You can see the way I'm aligning it very well. I'm aligning it, you can see, so that the edges of the both fabrics at the neck area here are the same. None is longer than the other. And also, this way, I make sure that it's flat, right? But I'm careful not to fold the fabric because this fabric is stretchy. It's a fabric fabric. Most of them are stretchy. So I'm careful not to stretch it. If you stretch it, it cannot give you the right shape when you are done stitching. So you try to be very, very careful with it. All right. Let's see this. The next thing we will now go to the table and 
look at it. All right, so at this moment, you see we have joined the yoke, all right? And you see it's already looking, everything's already looking together. So for us to, the next thing for us to now do the pressing, we'll iron it properly to get the desired shape we are looking for. We trim it appropriately. Let's confirm if our if the shoulder is okay. Shoulder is 19, right? What do we have here? This is how you measure the shoulder. What we have here is, is 19 and a half. So this is very, very okay. All right. We don't need to trim the shoulders again. The next thing for us to confirm is the word is the length. The length of our shirt is supposed to be what 29. So let's see. You measure from here the center of the shoulder, right? You measure from here. 29. This is 33 quarters. So this is fine. The remaining allowance is for our what? The hemming allowance. The next thing you measure is the word is the chest. How is the chest? The chest we are looking for is 40, is 42. All right. But because it's vintage, let us give it a little bit of allowance. Let's make it 43. So this is okay. We have about three allowance both sides for the seam. Okay. And the next thing is for us to look at is our arm. How is our arm? Is it exactly the way we want it? I think it's okay. Just to trim off some little excesses and we are done. We'll now go to the machine and we will join our shirt. So the down part here, the back piece is coming out a bit by about half an inch. So we'll trim it off. That's what I'm doing right now. Trimming it off. All right. The next thing for me to do is the sleeve. I'm going to touch the the shoulder a little, the arm a little. Now, if this were a fitting shirt, you guys know, would have deepened the front piece of the arm inside a little by half an inch, deeper than the back piece. But since it is a vintage shirt, which is very pretty, the body is not that fitted, we're not going to do the half inch trimming here for the front piece, all right? Hope you understand what I'm saying. If you don't get it, check the video on how to cut a packet shirt and you understand what I'm saying. That video is there. So this one here, I'll just touch a little bit because the front piece here. This is vintage material. No matter how you do, some places, some places will still want to shoot out the beads. So I'm, I'm touching some of this, some of these areas. Okay, so let's confirm our neck, right? The neck size we're looking for is a neck of what? A neck of 17. So since the neck is 17, this should be um, giving us at least 18 and a half. So if not 18 and a half, we'll trim it a bit. So this is not 18 and a half, so we'll trim it a bit, all right? We'll trim it a bit. Mind you, the reason why the neck shot a little, if you remember, we removed even half inch on the front piece here after we, we got our button, our button allowance. That's why we're having that little shorting. So we'll just trim off like um, half an inch. Trim off like half an inch. All right. But we won't depend the back. Remember, this is a shirt. You don't depend the back, the neck of the shirt and the back. You don't depend it. The same allowance I removed here. I'm going to move this side as well. About half an inch, remember? See, remove it here. But like I said, you won't get to the back. You stop here. All right. So this is our neck now. Now you see how it's looking. So let's check now. If we have 18 and a half, we are good to go. And 18 and a half, that should be 9 and a quarter. I think so. 9 and a quarter. So guys, I think we have it right now. Okay, you can see. We have nine and a quarter here. So, right, so for our neck, since what we have there is nine and a quarter, which is what, which is eighteen and a half, we are going to remove um two and a half inches from it. All right. So eighteen and a half minus two and a half that gives you what? Sixteen, right? Eighteen and a half minus two and a half that gives you sixteen. So it means what we are looking for here for our neck is a length of sixteen. This is the good side. I put it inside, and we're looking for a length of sixteen. All right, so this is what this is uh, 17 and a little inch added a little allowance to it 17 points point like 17 and a half there. I'll cut it out, I'll gum it first, and I will show us how to trim it. So I'll apply my paper gum to this. The same gum I use for the front piece, the same gum I'm applying here. All right. So I'm still going to fold it again so that we can trim the neck very well. So, all right. So what I'm looking for, remember we said is what? It's 16, all right? It's 16, but it's almost 17 because of seam allowance on both sides. 
I'm going to hold it this way, all right? So the, the edges here, I'm going to give it a wideness of just two inches, wideness of just two inches, okay? Two inches here, all right? Meanwhile, at the center here, I'll give it what? Three inches, difference of one inch. So, I'm going to use my curve, my French curve, all right? Can you see this? Very simple and straightforward. You get a very nice curve. Hope this biro is clear enough for you to see. If you cannot see the biro, please let me know. <laughs> all right, guys. That was a lighter note. So, we'll now cut it like this. You see this? Cut it this way. All right, so this is our neck. It's all set for us to attached to the vintage shirt so like i said guys if you're enjoying this video hit the subscribe button hit the like button and there's a link all right to my whatsapp group in group in the description below hit that link and join my whatsapp group so whenever i drop my videos you'll be the first to be notified let's go to the all right so this is the sleeve okay we have hem it if you want you can leave the body's gone at times it tries to open so i'm still going to run a stitch on it So I'll do this on both of the sleeves. Now for the for the this is the neck, all right. So I'm going to close it both sides, having this side, having that side, all right. So I will turn it over. See this? I'm going to do the same thing on the second side. So the next thing now is to, if I mean to turn this over, okay, I'll just turn it over. Mm -hmm and then weave it all right turn it over and weave it turn it over and weave it you see this so simply run a stitch here so that you stay together for me to go and weave it to join our sleeve for us to join our sleeve, this is one of the sleeves. I'm going to join it for you to see. There should be a notch at the top of the sleeve there. The same way there's a notch on the shoulder here. So this notch goes with this notch here. This notch on the shoulder goes with the notch on the sleeve. Hope you can see that well. Simply join it. Off. So the same thing, I'm going to join the second sleeve the same way I joined this first sleeve, all right? All right, so as you can see, we're finished joining the sleeve. This is the first, another side, another side. So the next thing for us to do is to go to the weaving machine, weave the inner of the shirt, then we'll come back and finish it off. So you can see we're finished weaving the shirt inside. We'll finish all the weavings. That's you. Next thing for us to do is to join it, okay? So we simply join. And when I was cutting this shirt, the allowance I gave for joining is half inch, right? So I did some trimmings. Let me see. I'm looking for, I'm looking for 16 there. I still have my 16. That's okay. The body, I did not trim the body, so I'm going to maintain my half inch allowance. All right. We are finished joining this side. The same thing we are going to do on the second side. Okay, we join the second side as well. This part here, I'm going to open it like this. All right. And I'll match in. Okay. Just about half an inch. And I'll do the same thing for the second side as well. So after running a stitch here, you see I have gone ahead to weave it all, all around. 
so I'm going to simply turn it over. All right. So when I turn it over for the when I turn it over for the points, you see how it's going to be looking from here all the way to here. Then I'll start my aiming from here. Okay, I'll start stitching from here. And I'm stitching on just same half inch allowance, all right? So, as you can see, the second side again, the second side. So, we are done with the hem. The next thing for us to do now is to go ahead and what and fix the neck, all right. So for us to fix the neck, fix the neck first, we identify the center, the midpoint of the neck, of the center. So we hold these two points like this. First, to get the center of this neck, all right? We're trying to get the center now, the midpoint. That is behind, okay? So this is it, behind. It's our midpoint behind. We make a notch here. We bring our neck, all right? So on even this, our neck. I'm going to identify the midpoint. But this will not notch it because we have weaved the neck, so we will not notch it. We'll make sure we fold it so that we know where the midpoint is. So since this is the midpoint, we we'll keep the midpoint where this notch is here. And then we'll open it this way and then start stitching here. Now when you are keeping this, ensure that this neck is a bit overshadowing the 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 this neck is a bit overshadowing this one here, just a little, all right, so we a bit overshadow it a little. I'll show you why it should overshadow it when we are, we are finishing the neck. So we stitch from this side to the end. You can see I'm stitching on the, on the good side, all right. The top is overshadowing the down. It's very intentional about that. So I'm reaching here, cut out this, and you can see, now let's see the allowance we have here from this notch to this point. We have an allowance of one and a half inch exactly, that's what we're looking for, all right? One and a half inch. So I'll simply fold it this way, all right? And you see, fold it this way, and then I'll stitch from here. Is very simple guys very very simple i believe we're finding it as, as easy as it is like i said before if you want to follow me on um, youtube you have to be getting my videos i have to ask questions you want me to help you uh, you know do something if you are struggling with the design to help you fix it join my youtube channel by clicking the link in the subscription below join my whatsapp group all right by clicking the link in the description below. Now look at at the end here. Look at how I'm going to fold this here. All right. This is the down part. Okay. I'm going to fold it this way. A little. And I'll match on it. So click the link in the description below and join my WhatsApp group, so that you can have, you know, a better chance of interacting with me. All right. So the next thing is for us to. Can you see what I did here? very intentional okay so this other side we still do the same thing we stitch now since we already know what the allowance is so that you have a very accurate work what we have this side is what what we have here from here to here what we have is one and a half inch right so we come here we still mark that one and a half inch and we start our stitching at that point let's see we'll have one and a half inch here all right here so we start stitching at this point here where it is one and a half inch. 
we have stitch part to the center. Can you see this? We we'll come here, the same thing we did there, we'll fold this here, all right, and then we'll stitch this. When we get here, we'll fold this in like we did on the other side, fold it in here. So the next thing for us to do is to turn this over. Let's see what we have. All right, turn this over here. See that here? Turn it over this side already. Can you see this? See the neck. This is fan collar. I'm going to notch this place. Guys, I'm going to notch this place. I'll do it on the other side as well. I'm going to notch this place. That when I turn it, it's really looking as uh -huh, the way I want. So the next thing for us to do, the last thing for us to do is to come over to the back here. Now, this was why I said when you are placing the this neck, this this weave area should overshadow this one because at last you are going to do this, okay? So you can start only the weave the weave part to be showing, all right? That's why I said that. <laughs> So you ensure that the fabric is not squeezing under so you pull it up very well see when i'm adjusting it when i'm adjusting it get to this point something do it this way and we are done see that See the back, see the back, see the front. So, at this point, we can confidently say that we are done stitching this vintage shirt. So, let's go to the table and see how it's looking, guys. Right? For us to, this is our shirt. We are done. The next thing is how to do what, how we can, we can fold this neck. All right. So, simply, we are going to mark an allowance from here to where we fold it. We are folding at what, at four and a half inches. Okay. So, this is four and a half inches here. So, we'll fold it this way. All right, at four and a half inches, four and a half inches, presser, four and a half inches, yeah. You can see this clearly. We are folding at four and a half inches. So the same thing, this other side will also fold it at four and a half inches. Four and a half inches here. Yeah. Right? So if you enjoy watching this video, if you learned anything from this video, if, we, if this video helps you in one way or the other, I will appreciate it. You can hit the subscribe button, turn your notification bell on, so that whenever I drop my videos, you will be the first to be notified. And like I said before, for more communication with me, you can hit the link in the description below and join my WhatsApp group, so that we can always chat there, all right? Trust me, it's a very, very active group. You will love it there. So, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to Not Fashion Hub, the best fashion channel in the whole wide world, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you. We are done with this. All right. Thank you.